I just noticed this speed modifier, which gives you minus 67% speed debuff as soon as you are in combat. And even worse, if you have any other one or two negative speed modifiers, your units will go down to the lowest base of one kilometer per hour. So it doesn't matter if you have an epic speed tank build with 14 kilometers per hour. With this, this in combat speed debuff, uh, you will move really slow perhaps even one kilometer per hour, which, which is really, really bad. Uh, and if you see in the background here, this is kind of what it looks in the game. You attack, you clear out your enemy units. You think you should take the tile as soon as you have defeated the enemy, but you don't. It takes a long time. And as you see at the rolling video in the background, it's because just this speed debuff. You have some speed debuffs beforehand, but with this 67% uh, speed debuff, you're completely standing still. You go one kilometer per hour until you're out of combat and then you start moving and you can really take that tile and go forth with an epic blitz of Poland, the Soviet Union, attacking Germany or, war, or whatever you want. Um, and I asked around in the community and almost no one knew about this. So I have had to start testing this out to dive some deeper into speed and make a guide about it. Uh, but I think that 67% speed reduction might be the first thing you didn't know about. The next thing you might not know is that there are three different places or times in the game where speed is calculated. You have the first one, which is called max speed, which isn't max speed, but this is paradox. So they call it the max speed, but that's the base speed in your template. And that speed can be, be modified uh, with a couple of different stuff. We'll check that out later, but you have the speed in the template. Uh, the next thing is movement speed on map. As soon as you start moving on the map with that base speed, it will be modified again with movement modifiers and the first third time is if you are in combat with other units you also have tactical speed involved in everything uh, combined with the movement speed so there are three different places where speed is calculated uh, and if we start with the max speed the speed in your template the base speed so to say uh, uh, that speed is equal to the slowest unit in your template, so you can't combine the, uh, quick tanks with infantry because it's the infantry will drag the tanks down. Uh, so that's the first thing, but that can be modified by a lot of different stuff. So if you want a better max speed for your units, uh, you can find possibilities there in doctrines, MIOs and theor theories. So if we check some doctrines here, uh, Let's go in here. We have, uh, uh, I think it's down uh, here. Uh, we have tank and armor variants, max speed plus 10%. Then you're affecting the speed in the template. You can find the similar things in MIOs for automotive designer. Here we have max speed for trucks and motorized rocket artillery. And we can find similar things for tanks. We have something called fast tanks here, uh, which give armor technology max speed. So that only affects things in the template. So that sets, sets your base speed for your unit. You can also have theorists giving you max speed. This is armor technology, max speed plus 10%. So this affects tanks and it affects them in the template. So the base speed that you found find here. This is what they call max speed, which is not the max speed. That's the base speed when you start calculating things on the map later on. And here comes the really interesting part, uh, which might be the first thing you don't know about speed, and that is how movement speed on the map speed is calculated. Uh, you always start with a max speed, which is not called max speed any longer, because, again, paradox. Uh, so now it's called the base speed, which it actually is. The speed from the template is the base speed here in the calculations when you move around in the map. Uh, you see we have a base speed here of 12, but we get modifiers here. We'll try to move trucks through the uh, uh, forest, which trucks don't want to do. Uh, we also have enemy air superiority and infrastructure. And the way this is calculated, it's just uh, easy. You ha start with 100% and you take minus 40% for forest, minus 4.9% extra, minus 10% extra. So this is your base speed, but it gets lowered by 54.9%. So you're left with what's left and you will move slower than half of what you actually would wanted. 
So this is how it's uh, done. So as you see, the more negative modifiers you have, the less speed you will have. If you would add another 40% to this, you would be down to zero uh, in speed, which is not possible. But one kilometer per hour, you would have killed the benefit of having these uh, 12 kilometers per hour. Uh, so even if they're simple, you need to understand this, that if you're starting to get a lot of negative speed modifiers, it will really hurt your game and really hurt your units. So if you understand it, this, it will uh, impact how you play. And since it's usually something that gives you negative modifiers, because you don't e always fight in planes in perfect condition, nice weather and everything, uh, you need to work with this, because if you don't, you will be slower than your opponent who understands this, which means that even if you think you will surround them, you will get surrounded because they are quicker than you, they will move faster than you, and you're not uh, in a position where you actually can counter that. Uh, so let's look at different ways to negate these negative modifiers so you're hopefully moving faster and you can even move faster than the base speed of your unit. Uh, but since it's paradox, uh, the modifiers to movement has a lot of different names. We could give them one name, but different tooltips give you different kind of names. So if you want your units to move faster on the map, uh, it's called division speed in some places, it's called movement in other places, you have movement bonus on land, uh, which are three things that affect everything. Then you can also find modifiers for armor speed or cavalry speed. So if we look at division speed, you can find them here, like, ah, we have the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, doctrine. You can find it here, we have division speed here, plus 5%. Uh, we have division speed uh, um, up here, ten uh, percent. So the division speed is one name for it. We have uh, division speed here also. Uh, you can always also find in your generals the possibility to give them the trait uh, improved expert. I love this trait. It gives you an extra ten percent. Not called division speed and more movement bonus on land. Uh, if you're gonna find a lot, fight a lot in mountains and you get this one, you get movement plus 5%, also division speed. And you can always also find, if we go to like the Soviet Union, here we have some Cossack things, uh, restore Cossack units, which give cavalry speed. And that's also like division speed, but it only gives speed to cavalry units. Uh, and that's the same thing if we go back to Germany. Uh, we also have it for leaders, because if you have a leader with, a, let's find them here, a panzer leader, you also get armor speed. So everything that is an armor in their division template uh, will get that extra movement speed on land. And we also have another really, really important way to get extra movement speed, and that's using a motorized recon company. As you see down here, you have movement in different terrains. So if you move, move in planes and has this motorized recon company, you get an extra 15% movement. You have 10% extra movement to rivers and so forth. So motorized company is extremely good and it's even better than most other recon companies. Uh, armor recon companies give a diff different skew to the, to the speed uh, bonuses. Uh, light armor recon is actually worse than motorized, so I really, really, really like having motorized if I want to m work with speed modifiers. And as you see here, we have a plus 15% movement in planes, it does a lot. And if you add these ones up together, you will have a movement speed that is greater than you actually have from the beginning. So let's get back to the first thing that you probably didn't know in the beginning of this video. And that's the 67% debuff in movement speed as soon as you're in combat. And if we look at this unit here, we have a base of 12%, uh, 12 kilometers per hour. We have a lot of ne negative modifiers going in because it's a forest, uh, they don't like forests. But as soon as we start coming into combat, you see there's a new modifier here. It says in combat times 33% which is not what it does, and it's, again, please paradox, uh, make some uh, work with the tooltips. Uh, but anyways, uh, this means that you have a minus 67% 
extra debuff, like the force debuff, but it's a minus 67 to 67%, and that's huge. Which means in this battle we have minus 67% because that in combat debuff, uh, and we have forest minus 40%, which means right there we're down to more than minus 100, and we go from 12 kilometers per hour to the lowest possible one kilometer per hour, and it will take us four days and one hour to really to get there as soon as the battle is. Uh, finished. If we don't have the possibility to craft them, crack them beforehand, then we'll start moving again without that in combat times 33%, minus 67% debuff. But we could go for the planes up here uh, with our troops, and if we see we're in combat, but uh, we're in planes, so the planes gives us 15% and that's for from the recon company. We have mobile warfare, we have maneuver war warfare. Uh, we're still not in such a place where we're moving 11 km per hour, which is the base speed, but we're getting there. And here comes the last sleeve up our arms. And the fourth thing you might not know, and that is tactic speed. As soon as we're in combat, there's something called a tactic speed. So the in combat modifier modifies in combat, but you also have tactic speed, which affects what's happening in combat. And you can find the different tactics you own uh, here. And we have two great tactics. We have blitz giving you 50% extra tactic speed, and we have breakthrough giving you an extra 50% tactic speed. So as soon as you're locked in combat, you will have 50% extra tactic speed if you have blitz or if you have a breakthrough. And that's huge. I think my next guide will be solely about tactics, but I will go through breakthrough and blitz in this guide so you know and understand tactic speed. Uh, we also have our live game, 1st of April, an Easter game, historic game, two teams, Axis allies. It will be amazing with the studio commenting the entire day. Uh, we have a bunch of other content that will come out probably in April, so stay tuned on the channel. Uh, also, Badger is the next one up for the Patreon guides, so a big shout out to our Patreons that makes us do these guides and allow us to do everything. Uh, and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. In every battle, we choose tactics. Uh, we have an attacker tactics and uh, the defender tactics. Breakthrough and Blitz are amazing in this regard, if you want some speed. If you look here at Blitz, this is movement speed in combat. So in combat you get 50% extra movement speed if you choose Blitz or Breakthrough, or if your general choose, because you can't choose, this is a probability-based system. So having 50% extra, if we look at the speed here on these guys, we will have plus 50% if a tactic that we wanted will be applied. They won't have it now, but if we make it roll a little bit, we'll see if we get a new tactic here before we win. Uh, yeah, there we have it. We got a tactic plus 15% movement speed, and that's what's what will happen if we get Blitz or Breakthrough. Even these tactics, I think there was some kind of unexpected thrust, give you tactic movement, it's good. But if you get Blitz, Breakthrough, 50%, that's amazing. And if you want these two tactics to fire to really move fast and encircle your opponent, uh, you can always check what's necessary. So if you want Blitz to fire, you need to have Harness over 50%. Uh, and one of the following, have a Panzer Leader, Skill Advantage over one, or at least a skill level uh, of more than two. Uh, breakthrough uh, is kind of kinder. Uh, you need to have uh, uh, this as an offensive tactic. And uh, Harness needs to be over 50% or Skill Advantage over one. So you can always check a battle and see how likely is this to fire. And it's not likely at all because our Panzer is too weak. It doesn't have the hardness necessary. So we'll try to give him a little bit more hardness so you can see how, how big of a chance you have to get this quick uh, breakthrough with the tactics of breakthrough or blitz. Okay, I have given the tank a lot more hardness, so over 50% which ne is needed to get breakthrough or blitz. So let's attack and see what happens. We attack, we get unexpected thrust, but we can always see here that the chances to getting a breakthrough is 20%, and the chances of getting blitz is 20%. So this time we didn't get it, but if we keep it rolling, we need to decrease speed there. If we keep it rolling, see if we change the tactics, there it is, we got breakthrough, so we got the tactics, uh, and we can see speed here, we have that plus 50% 
really, really amazing. Uh, we won't win the battle this time, but that's, that's not important in this guide. Uh, I will make a guide in two weeks again. I will focus on tactics, because even if it says it's 20% to get uh, breakthrough and 20% getting blitz, there's a lot of things you can do to actually get more chance to have the tactics you want. But that's another video. Uh, and that's all for this video, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. I ho hope you learned a lot. I hope you will be able to encircle your enemies much more after this video than before. Uh, please like and subscribe. Check out our other content. And I will see you guys next time.